Friends, today I was supposed to have a new knife to reveal and unbox for you, but it didn't show up. So, I've been meaning to do a little project on this Buck Spitfire. Now, this is a pretty cool little knife. I got a unboxing and review on this. It's been pretty popular. But since it's been sitting here, as you can see, this thing is... Uh, it's gotten very stiff. It wasn't this stiff when I took it out of the box. And all I did was use it during the day, that one day. And man, this thing, I pulled it out the other day and went to open up a letter. And I'm like, wow, I can't even open that thing up with one hand. So I'm going to grab my little Weehaw bits here and see what is going on here. Let's loosen up this pivot bolt here. And, well, no, that really didn't make much of a difference. It is still crazy stiff. I don't know if we got some something up inside this knife or something that's set up in there. Let's back this pivot bolt or screw or whatever you want to call it way out there. Nah, that's not making a difference at all. It's got to be in this back spring or this lock mechanism. So let's go ahead and tear this thing down get this pocket clip off of here and uh, I want to get that pocket clip off first that way we can lay the knife flat it won't be in the way when we go to disassemble it plus I want to do something with that pocket clip it's not a deep carry so I've been meaning to do something with that anyway but hey before we get started let's check out our knife giveaways we got going on because this Sunday tomorrow we're giving away the Kershaw cold pepper, so you still have time to get in this giveaway. I'm probably not going to do the giveaway till about noon tomorrow. All right, so if you can get on there, and this is on my uh, Spiderco fillet knife. If you go to that video, it'll show you the catchphrase to get that knife. Also, we have this Browning with this cool Warncliffe blade. This is a pretty nice knife. Look at that. Ain't that cool? That's a perfect desk knife for opening up boxes and stuff like that. That'll be the Sunday after. And then the Sunday after that is the open all number 8, which I keep forgetting how to open all it. But you got to turn that little collar. But what a cool little knife this is. John Shiflet, one of my original subscribers, he turned us on to this knife. And we did a review last week. Check out that video. But we're giving this one away three Sundays from now. So go find that video and see how to enter. And then four Sundays from now, we're giving away this Boker Plus Range Buster, which is kind of a knockoff of the Case Sod Buster. But it's actually bigger. You know, it's got a little different blade, and it's got a lock back and a lanyard hole. So what a cool knife that is. I almost don't want to give it away. But this was purchased with One Angry Kid Knife Oil money. And all the money from One Angry Kid Knife Oil sales goes to buying these knives. So thanks to everybody that's been buying One Angry Kid Knife Oil. Because that has purchased four knives. And we have a fifth one coming soon. Here's the four we already have. 421, 428, 55, and 512. Next four Sundays are covered, so don't forget to subscribe to the channel, like this video, and share it to any of your friends who might like similar knife content. Sharing to your friends is what does the best uh, help to the channel, so it's much appreciated. Thank you. Alright, so let's get back to our Buck Spitfire. This thing does not want to open very good, and it's got kind of a crappy pocket clip, so we're going to take this thing apart and see if we can fix both those problems tonight since we didn't get our new knife in so I'm just getting this pocket clip off here real quick let's get us a box here there's an old lynch this is a real old lynch uh oh 12 gauge and a 357 in there let's get that out of there we don't need that in there all right, we got extra screws, got some takeoff clips in there. So we'll just use that box and stick this and stick those screws in there for now. And get that out of the way so we don't lose them while we're working on the knife. 
because we're probably not putting that back on there and next up we got to take three more screws from the back spacer and the lock bar pivot screw get those on out of there and set those screws up there make sure we don't lose them this, this is the lock bar pivot screw here and then we can take that front scale off of there it's a little stiff I have to work that off of there yeah there we go all right well I don't know. looks pretty clean in there I don't see anything it's got a nice residue of oil I don't know there's a, a little something there a little sliver of metal you see it right there yeah looks like a hair but it's like a wire burr or something all right it's got these little looks like nylon washers in here very thin and clear I imagine it's nylon it's definitely not a ball bearing and even with that scale off it's, just, it's still pretty stiff it's not as stiff as it was but it's still pretty yeah. Yeah, stiff alright so we need to go ahead and get this thing taken apart here let's, uh, let's go ahead and figure out how we're going to do this without getting that spring in my face now look at that Look how that blade hits that backspacer right there, huh? That's good to know. I wouldn't think they'd let the blade hit it like that, but they sure did. Alright, well. Knife's sharp as a razor, so it didn't hurt it too much yet. There's that washer in there. I'm sure it's probably got one on both sides. I don't want this spring to get me. So let's figure out how we're going to take the rest of this apart. I'm going to take my little case sod buster and pry up on here and kind of loosen everything up a little bit. There we go. Well, let's just go ahead and pop this spring right out of there. Well, that was easy enough. It came right out. Put that right there. All right, so now everything. Let's check it out. Check out the blade there. Save these washers. Don't want to lose those. Clean this up. Yeah, I don't feel any burrs or anything on this. This that blade. That seems like it was finished extremely well. Let's check this lock bar. I don't know. Don't feel real bad. Nothing real, real evident. Maybe a small burr there on the end. We'll look at that a little bit more later. Check out these scales. Hmm. Let's go ahead and wipe them down. Let's see what we got here. Yeah. When they drilled those and tapped them, they got a burr sticking on the back side. This one too. Right there, right next to the pivot. So we're going to take care of that and get those cleaned up. And I'm going to use this little file right here. And it really doesn't matter because this side is not the show side. It's just on the inside. Let's get those burrs off. Not only is there a burr where they drilled and tapped those uh, pocket clip holes, there's a little bit around these um, standoff pin. So we'll just go ahead and clean up the whole inside of both of these scales and uh, make sure there's no burrs there that's going to grab or catch that blade. And when I was done with the file, I'll go ahead and take my little Spider Co ceramic file and just 
make it even smoother. That way there's definitely not any sharp edges or burrs. Everything's nice and perfectly smooth. And we're going to get this knife running like silk, right? Yeah, there's nothing on this blade. This blade is perfect. There's nothing on here. Yeah, not a single burr. Everything's finished very well. This lock bar. Yeah, I can feel something on one side. So let me grab that stone. And let's move this out a little bit. Don't take too much there. It's such a minor thing. There we go. Now we're going to take some of my One Angry Kid knife oil that you can get at OneAngryKid.com and we are going to lube this knife up and get everything, all those areas that you can't get to like underneath these washers, in between the scale and the washer and we're just going to do a nice assembly. Make sure everything's clean, lubricated, get our back spacer on here. There we go. Alright. We're going to lubricate around the lock bar pivot and behind where the lock bar goes. Put the lock bar on there. Put some more oil on top of it and all the pins and pivot screws. Now we got to get this spring in here. Now this spring, I think that's where a lot of the problem is. I think it's too stiff. So I'm going to go ahead and bend it a little bit and take a little pressure off. I see they had a complaint on some of the original ones that they were breaking. So I think they went in there with a real heavy spring. Alright, so now i got to get that spring set in there. So let me just rock it up here like that, lock it in, and then hold it like that. And now I can set my blade on there, and the blade's already got the little washers on each side. Alright, that feels good. So let's finish lubricating everything up on the second side here before we put the second scale on. And we'll just button everything up here real quick and see how it all turned out. I got a feeling. It's just about perfect. We will see. All right. Let's tighten these up. All right. Let's see if we can tighten up that pivot screw just a little bit more. And we'll come back and put Loctite on these once we find out exactly how we want them. I'll tell you. That feels pretty, pretty good. That is smooth. Real smooth. I like that. That feels good. But I bubbled up the pocket clip and broke it. So we're going to have to use something else. So I found a takeoff clip from my Benchmade tagged out. And I think it's going to work. I'll use that broken piece to see. If, yeah, them holes look just about perfect. So let's screw that on there. And using just the original screws, see we can't get this thing to work. I didn't like it on the tag, Dad. It was too short, and I'm not going to spend thirty bucks on a clip for a fifty-dollar knife. I just this will be just fine. I'll just have to unspring it here, and I'll show you what I'm talking about in a minute. Let's get tightened in. So this clip was too hard to get on the pocket because it's just way too stiff and it's got too much clamp force. So what I'm going to do, and don't do this at home. This is knife abuse, okay? Only I can do this. 
All right, I'm going to pull out on this and try to unspring it a little bit and make it a little easier to get in the pocket. Yeah, much better. Much less clamp force. See right there? See? So let's see a little gap in between the knife and the clip. That's what it needed to make it a little easier to get in the pocket. That'll work. You know? Nice and slick. Man, I'm really liking that action now. That is working perfect. Pocket clip, I don't know about the color. But I could uh I can check and see if I can find a cheap aftermarket one to put on there that isn't black or maybe I can strip the black off of it. I don't know. I'm not sure what it's made out of. Alright, so let's uh let's clean this mess up and wrap this up. If you're still with me, I appreciate it. I know it wasn't the most exciting uh, knife video, but my knife didn't come in that I wanted to review. And that is the content I came up for you with for tonight. So, if you stuck around, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you enter all the knife giveaways. I hope you check in tomorrow night and every Sunday for the next five weeks. And check on these giveaway knives. Let's clean this up. And lay all them out one more time so we can see it. Let's get my knife oil out of the way. All right, once again, we have the Kershaw Cold Pepper, the Browning Warncliffe, the Open L number eight, and the Range Buster. All bought from proceeds from One Angry Kid Knife Oil at OneAngryKid.com. And all that money for that oil goes towards these knife and these giveaways. So if you want to participate and support the giveaways, buy yourself some knife oil. It is really good knife oil. I wouldn't sell it if it wasn't. Either way, thanks for viewing. Good luck in the giveaways. Good night.